YouTube is very interesting because all of a sudden it allows everybody to be a prophetic voice. And the reason that this is dangerous is because unlike a church setting, there is really no order and structure on YouTube to test and validate prophetic voices. In the church, the Bible gives us order and structure on testing prophecy. However, this structure and order does not exist on YouTube because the algorithm exalts videos regardless if they're true or not. Today I'm going to break down how to discern witchcraft on YouTube being disguised as prophecy from God so you can have discernment on what the enemy is doing in these last days, as well as staying rooted in the truth that's found in Jesus Christ. What's going on guys? It's Big Nick back for another video. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the channel today. Before we get into today's video, if you guys like Christian content, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel down below if you are new, and turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Prophecy is a powerful tool from God, which is a gift as stated in Romans 12 6, where Paul states, having then gifts deferring according to the grace that is given to us, let us use Use them if prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. The reason prophecy is so powerful is because it displays the power of God by being able to accurately foretell events before they come to pass, which is used in the New Testament for edifying the church. Prophecy still exists today just like it did in the biblical times, and it's important not to get religious about this subject and be completely opposed to the gift altogether. First Thessalonians 5 19 to 21 states, Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. The Bible Bible tells us not to quench the Holy Spirit by treating prophecies with contempt, which means treating a prophecy like it's worthless or unimportant. However, there are qualifications for being a prophetic voice that you must be aware about. A sign of a biblical prophet is someone who does not contradict the Bible. A true prophet will never give a prophecy that contradicts scripture because Numbers 23 19 says God is not a man that he should lie. And God tells the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 9 to 10 that he has put his words in Jeremiah's mouth. Since the Bible is the word of God, a prophet cannot contradict the Bible because this would mean that God's prophetic word is contradicting his written word, which would make him a liar, which is impossible since God created the world solely on truth. Another indication that somebody is a prophet of God is when they tell a prophecy with the time element added to it. An example would be in Jonah 3, 4, where the prophet Jonah was instructed by God to go to Nineveh and tell them to repent. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. This was a conditional prophecy in which God was going to judge them in 40 days if they did not repent. But they ended up repenting and not experiencing judgment. However, Jonah highlights the office of a prophet by giving a word from God with a time element added to it. Prophecy is powerful, and it's definitely necessary for the body of Christ. However, false prophecy has also been creeping in on YouTube. And here are some examples to watch out for when a prophecy is being used as divination rather than to edify the body of Christ. The first red flag is what I call gossip prophecy. This is where a person on YouTube will say, that they got a word from God about another brother or sister in Christ on how they're an occultist, a false teacher, a Freemason, etc. They will often disguise this as exposing darkness when in reality, this is just to create more division and spread more negativity. If someone is truly a false teacher, God will handle it himself. He doesn't need some random YouTuber taking on the business of exposing someone for him. An example of this is when the apostles were made to appear before the Sanhedrin after healing many and preaching the word of Jesus. The Pharisees were furious and they wanted to put the apostles to death. But a certain Pharisee named Gamaliel tells them in Acts 5 38 to 39. So my advice is leave these men alone. Let them go. If they are planning and doing these things merely on their own, it will soon be overthrown. But if it is from God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. And in this context, the Pharisees were specifically discussing if the apostles were false teachers or not. If something is not from God, he will overthrow it. And he doesn't need some random YouTuber wearing a prayer shawl and a head covering to sound the alarm on the latest false teacher. The second red flag is what I call negative dream prophecy. Dreams are powerful and it even says in the book of Job that God speaks to man in deep sleep. However, many people don't understand that not every dream you get is from God. In fact, sometimes you can think that you're getting a dream from God when in reality it's Satan trying to deceive you. Dreams can also come from the second heaven which is the demonic realm. So in order to know that you're getting a dream from Jesus specifically, I would encourage you to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your dream state before you go to bed. Example of a false negative dream prophecy would be like having a dream of someone dying, someone doing witchcraft, someone being demonically possessed, etc. None of these dreams 
dreams bring glory to God. And in fact, the spirit of Jezebel can give people these dreams so they speak curses over others, whether knowingly or unknowingly. The Bible says God is love, and it seems like the opposite of love when God is supposedly showing you something evil about another brother or sister in Christ. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 6 says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Now maybe on the rare occasion, a seasoned prophet can get a dream from the Lord about a specific individual, but God can trust them with this type of dream because they're not moving in rejection and they're not a babe in Christ. And because of that, they know how to walk in love in ministering to this person, as well as genuinely wanting to see them do better. They're not going to go on YouTube and make a call-out video about them. They're going to approach them in person and pour into them, speak love over them, not gossip about them. The third red flag is what I call flesh prophecy. You may have noticed there are many so-called prophets on YouTube who tell them that they heard from God that your kingdom spouse is on the way. Many people watch these videos rather than actually seeking God for themselves, and they make an idol out of these prophecies that may not even be true because their flesh gets pleasure in thinking that their kingdom spouse is on the way. Because what do you do with your spouse? Come on. Let's just be blunt here. Marriage is beautiful, but unfortunately, a lot of people in the church idolize marriage because they're searching for physical pleasure as well as a man or woman to fill a void in their heart that God wants to heal. If God told you that your husband or wife is on the way, that's absolutely great. But just because you watch some random person on YouTube who claims to be a prophetic voice about your spouse doesn't mean that it's 100% true. Another example of flesh prophecy that I've seen personally is when someone claims that God told them this investment or crypto coin is about to be huge and you need to invest in it now because God told them that if you don't invest in it now, you're going to miss out on the opportunity. These people are claiming to receive words from the Most High, when in reality, these are pump and dump schemes that they are running for their own financial gain, using the name of God for it, which is crazy. Prosperity is biblical and God does bless us financially, but you need to discern the spirit behind these types of videos rather than trusting every so-called prophet who claims that God spoke to them about some random, unheard of meme coin with low liquidity. The reason why YouTube prophets can be dangerous is because some of them are prophesying and teaching as lone wolves. And they are releasing words with no spiritual covering or accountability. They believe since God called them, they don't need to submit to in-person leadership and they can just prophesy whatever they want to talk about on YouTube. This is rebellion and witchcraft and the spirit of Jezebel preys on these types of people and is in some of these people since Jezebel wanted to be a prophetess without following any ordinances and accountability. Moses, one of the most famous prophets in the entire Bible, had accountability and spiritual leadership from his father-in-law, Jethro. And Moses was a man who literally received the Ten Commandments from God himself. So with that being said, if a supposed prophetic voice on YouTube has no church, leadership, covering, or accountability, you have to ask yourself, what spirit are they really operating under? And if God is truly going to use someone who's in rebellion and can't submit to spiritual authority. Hebrews 13, 17 emphasizes the importance of leadership in our lives where it states, obey your leaders and submit to them for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grace or that would be of no advantage to you. A great way to know if someone is a true prophet is to see if they have a spiritual covering or a church where they are submitted to. Unfortunately, with YouTube prophets, some are able to override order and biblical structure with the algorithm bypassing it by boosting them. It's important to have a relationship with Jesus yourself as well as understanding that prophecy is a beautiful thing, but not to get caught up in false prophecy as a foundation for your relationship with God. If you made it all the way till the end of the video, I want you to comment down below, prophecy is important. If you guys want to financially sow into this ministry, I have an offering link that's in the description, or I have merch you can buy, which is also linked in the description. If you guys want to watch my last video, you can simply click up here, or you can subscribe to the channel right up here. I'll see you guys very soon for another video. I love you guys so much. May God bless all of you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, take care and peace out.